Good morning to all of you, and thank you for joining us today for our devotion time. It's Tuesday, March 29th, and what a joy it is to join together, to join together around God's Word, to reflect for a few minutes on His amazing love, His amazing grace that He now shares with you both today and every day. I'm Vicar Recker, and I'm speaking to you from St. John's Lutheran Church in Barry Mills, Wisconsin. Let's now begin our time this morning, and let's do that by going to the Lord in prayer. And, and let's use Martin Luther's morning prayer. We pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. You know, spring means many things for many people. For some people, it means a chance for restart. For others, it might mean a chance to see rebirth, to see regrowth in our life. We sometimes see the birds starting to build their little nests for their little baby birds that are soon going to be born in those trees. We start to see the flowers starting to come up from the thawing ground and, and starting to bloom. We see the sun coming up a little earlier and maybe warming our faces every morning. But maybe the best thing of all is the return of the leaves. The return of the little buds on the trees and those fruit trees as well. You know, fruit is really essential for all types of things, for all sorts of things in our daily lives, isn't it? It gives us those proper vitamins, those vitamins for health, those vitamins for growth. It gives us the nutrients that our bodies need to stay nourished, to stay strong. Fruit is really excellent for all sorts of things. And for the last few weeks now, we have been talking about the wonderful fruits, fruits of the Spirit. Those gifts that are given to us for our daily lives as Christians. Those fruits for spiritual growth, for spiritual nourishment. But they also help us in our lives as children of the Spirit. They remind us of who we are as God's people. And we also talked about some of those fruits that Paul mentions in his letter to the Galatians. Those fruits like love, like joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All those things are wonderful fruits. They're unique fruits. And they all help keep us focused on who is the provider of all of them. The one who gives us these fruits to increase our faith. We know it's Jesus. But today I want us to focus on a specific fruit. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. And when we think of faithfulness, what do we sometimes think of? Maybe some of us immediately think of a wedding ceremony. That moment, that special moment that two people make their promises to each other. They make their promises not only to themselves, but also to the witnesses that are there in church. But most importantly, they're making a promise to be faithful to one another 
and to be faithful to God. To be faithful to each other for the rest of their lives. That is a huge deal. Being faithful is a big deal. But we also know that being faithful can be a difficult thing for us to do, right? You know, when I was attending Martin Luther College a few years ago, there were times where being faithful in my classroom attendance, it was really tested. That snooze button on the side of my bed was really tempting to hit when that alarm for my 7.30 class went off every morning. I think we've all been there, right? We've all been in that situation in our lives where being faithful can really be a little bit of an effort. It takes effort. It takes effort to be faithful in our jobs. It takes effort to be faithful to our church attendance every week. It takes effort in being faithful to our teachers to being faithful in our schoolwork and being faithful in our many projects that we all have going on in our day-to-day lives. And yet, in all reality, we have not been faithful in everything that we say or we do. By nature, we so often, we want to do stuff our own way. We want to instead be selfish. We're unfaithful. We're unfaithful in our work. We try to maybe cut corners in our life, to do things maybe in secret, to hide things from others. We're unfaithful in our hearts. But most importantly, We're sometimes unfaithful with our Lord. And yet, unlike us, who have been nothing but unfaithful in what we say and in what we do, we have one. We have the one who has been faithful for us. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you know all about the promises that our Savior gives to us. Those promises about being faithful for us. In fact, he tells us. He encourages us to be faithful, even when it might be the most difficult times to be faithful. And you know, those promises, they're really familiar to us, right? And sometimes they may even sound a little cliche for us in our lives, right? But they're not little sayings. They're deep down truths that you can trust, that you can trust today. So unlike our friends, unlike our coworkers, unlike even our spouses, God has not broken his promises with you. He has remained faithful. So when life maybe throws you a curveball in life, instead of wondering if God is going to be faithful to you, you can lean on him. You can rely on him and know that the same God who parted that Red Sea so long ago for his people is the same faithful God that became your Savior, that went to the cross for you, that's faithful to you, that's as faithful and as sure as I'm speaking to you today. In whatever trial you are facing or might face every day. So let's be people of faithfulness, faith friends, faithful co-workers, faithful spouses. 
and let's shine that fruit of the spirit of faithfulness into other people's lives. And let us listen to what Jesus himself tells us. As he tells us in Revelation chapter 2, he says, Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let's pray. Most gracious and merciful Father, we admit that we at times and by our sinful nature have been unfaithful to you. We've been unfaithful by what we say, by our actions, and by our deeds. Forgive us for those times that we are unfaithful to you, but remind us, remind us that your faithful love endures forever. Your faithfulness encourages us to be Christians, to be faithful Christians in our work, in our daily lives, and serving other people. Help us always be mindful of that faithfulness that you give to us, only through Jesus, our Lord. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, we thank you for joining us today for our devotion time. I just have a few quick things for us to remember and keep in mind. This week, we have another opportunity to reflect on that ultimate faithfulness that our Savior demonstrated for us. And we do that by continuing with our midweek Lenten services here at St. John's starting at 7 p.m. So please come and join us for that as well. We're also going to be having one more opportunity to join in fellowship on Thursday evening, this Thursday starting at 7 p.m. downstairs at church. And we're going to be having a little Bible study on Christ in the Old Testament. And this week is going to be our last one. And we'll be looking more deeply, more closely on the angel of the Lord. So please join us if you are able. We would love to see you there as well. Let's now close with the blessing of our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.